As you enter NetApp's facility in Raleigh, North Carolina, you will notice that there is a new building off to your left. This building is NetApp's new Global Dynamic Lab, housing NetApp's fourth generation data center that supports NetApp's product operations and corporate IT requirements. Launched in March of 2009, it is rich with innovative designs and systems that NetApp has developed over the past decade, while evolving and growing to meet the demands of our business. The design of the building sets it apart from other buildings which house data centers. This is a data center that can accommodate power densities up to 42 kilowatt per cabinet, operates 80% more efficiently than the typical data center, and was built for one-third the industry benchmark cost. In addition, the building supports multi-tier environments and the design concepts are easily transferable. The ability to use ambient air to provide free cooling of data center equipment is the major reason the building is so energy efficient to operate. We believe that the approach to address energy efficiency must be holistic. It must include a clear IT plan to optimize the utilization of our servers, storage, and networks, but it must also include a focus on reducing the non-IT loads in the data center. Power usage effectiveness ratio is cited as the data center infrastructure efficiency metric. In this building, it has been driven down to 1.2, as compared to the current average of 2.0. The PUE ratio reduces the utility-related operating cost by 80%. This equates to $7.3 million a year when the building is fully utilized. Reducing construction costs corresponds to a 66% capex reduction, which equates to an additional $14.5 million a year in reduced opex, based on an infrastructure average asset life of 15 years. One of the primary contributors to the reduced construction cost is ability to house 25 megawatts of equipment load, or 800 watts a square foot, and a very compressed overall building footprint. The typical data center at 100 to 150 watts a square foot would be 20 times larger in footprint. By using our proprietary pressure-controlled cooling approach, coupled with the vertical stacked configuration of our air handling and power delivery systems, we attain much higher power densities at a fraction of the overall building size, thereby greatly reducing overall construction costs. The building is basically a three-story structure. The primary power is distributed from utility transformers in the basement to UPS, secondary transformers and distribution panels located directly above. This allows the physical length from the utility-owned transformers to the load to be as little as 80 linear feet. Similarly, the cost to distribute cooling water is also much less since the travel path of piping is a fraction of the typical data center, which is a single-story spread-out structure. So we use much less copper for power, much less steel for pipe than what would be required to build a typical data center 20 times larger in order to deliver 25 megawatts of power. The air handling systems are on the third floor and locating them directly above the equipment eliminates nearly 100% of duct work. This not only saves in construction costs but also reduces the horsepower required by fans since the travel path of cooling air is very short. Here you can see where the conduit leaving the primary switchboards extends upwards towards the load in the data center. In this design, one set of feeds extend up into the data center area to serve load requirements of the south end of the building, and a second set of conduit extends up into the mezzanine floor to be distributed to the load at the north end of the building. We use flywheel UPS systems that easily carry the required load in the event of a utility failure before transfer to the diesel generators. Not only can flywheel systems be more efficient than batteries, the advantages include the ability to house the flywheels in a warm ambient, which eliminates the cost to construct a special environment and also require less physical space than a battery-based solution. We're back inside the basement level of the building now, where the massive chiller plant resides. Nearly 90% of the year, we're able to use outside air for cooling the data center. However, 2-3% to of the year, when outside temperatures near 100 degrees Fahrenheit, we are solely dependent on the chillers as a sole source of cooling. We are able to use outside air for free cooling to such a large degree because we are able to cool the IT load with 75-80 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. With this target supply temperature air, we can raise our chiller supply temperature to 55 degrees. This increases the chiller's efficiency, using 28% less energy than a traditional chiller. We are also able to use non-potable water as makeup water to the cooling towers, which is another green feature of the building. Some of the design features associated with our super-efficient chilled water plant would be more important if the system were operated 24-7, 365, as in the case with most data centers. But the fact is our data center operates only a few hundred hours per year.
In a typical data center, the air handler systems supply 30% more air than required. This results in higher first cost and ongoing wasted energy. It can even lead to an uneven distribution of cooling air, along with hot spots. NetApp uses our own proprietary pressure-controlled cooling technology to exactly match the airflow required by the IT equipment with the cooling system. This technology provides evenly distributed airflow at a much higher temperature without hot spots, thus increasing the hours outside air can be drawn in as the sole source of cooling, keeping the chiller plant off. Because of the building's vertical design, there is no horizontal management of airflow. Hot air rises and exits the building quickly, and cold air is brought down from the roof through the air handlers directly into our cold rooms. The Global Dynamic Lab Data Center currently accommodates 38 cold rooms and 36 hot aisles, separated by a main access hallway in the middle. This space houses 2,166 52-unit racks that can provide an average of 12 kilowatt each to IT workloads. The electrical systems distribute 720 kilowatts to each cold room. This design is able to accommodate up to 42 kilowatts per rack when high density deployments are required. As we travel down the main aisle of the data center, you should be able to get a feel for the hot aisle and cold room arrangement. For most of the data center, doors are installed at both ends of the pressure-controlled cold rooms. This stops the mixing of hot and cold air and eliminates bypass airflow, reducing fan energy. The cost of constructing the contained cold rooms was minimal, less than 5% of the overall construction cost. The reduction in primary air handling equipment was nearly five-fold, so not only do we save in construction, the ongoing costs are much, much lower. When we are operating in the free cooling mode, the PUE can be as low as 1.02. In the corporate IT racks, doors are installed on both the hot aisles and cold rooms to provide a more secure environment that is strictly controlled. No problem with having doors on the hot aisle. We leave them off unless required for physical security to allow for free movement around the data center. As we walk into one of the pressure-controlled cold rooms, you can see the doors on both ends, as well as a lowered ceiling that seals the top of the rows. In addition, blanking panels are deployed in the racks where no IT kits are installed to prevent airflow between the hot aisle and cold room. As we move over to one of the hot aisles, you can see that both ends are open and that there is no lowered ceiling. As we look up, you can see some of our cable distribution and vents or open grates in the ceiling. So it is easy to see how the design eliminates the need for ductwork, dramatically reducing fan horsepower and electrical consumption normally required to manage air movement within a data center. We are now up in the mezzanine area above the data center floor. You can see one of the many air handlers that draw air straight down from the rooftop and into the cold rooms. Right in front of the air handler, you can see a black grate on the floor. That is one of the many openings in the hot aisles that allow the hot air to move directly up into the mezzanine floor. When cooling with outside air, air must exhaust from the building in an equal amount as air brought in from outside. As required, louvers around the entire building on the mezzanine level are open to allow the air to flow out of the building. Moving back to the air handler, you'll notice that it also has louvers on it. This allows us to mix hot air from the aisles below with outside air to adjust the outside air temperature up if required when outside air temperatures are actually too cold. For about 70% of the year, air is delivered unconditioned directly from the rooftop to the cold rooms, or we are mixing warm return air with outside air. In the event that the outside air exceeds the temperature of the hot aisles, the building can operate just as a traditional data center, recirculating and cooling the air from the hot aisles. This condition only occurs about 2-3% to of the year. The other 27% of the time we use the outside air for supply and supplement with chilled water as required to meet target supply air temperatures. One final feature I'll point out is the ability of our airflow systems to repurpose the air from our hot aisles. When heating is required to manage comfort in office spaces, we can modulate and provide heat Heating for those areas using air from the hot aisles. Thank you for taking the time to explore the revolutionary design of the facility infrastructure that supports NetApp's Global Dynamic Lab in Raleigh, North Carolina. I hope you've enjoyed the brief tour and look forward to talking with you more about how we can do this for you.